All right, so let's get started. Can everybody see my screen? Just give me a thumbs up if you can. Um, all right, so the chat room is open. If you have any questions, feel free to ask your questions and, uh, and it's, it's an interactive presentation. So I am more than happy with pausing and answering any questions you might have. Um, and don't worry about, and, and no question is a bad question. Uh, when it comes to marketing budget and how to allocate allocate your budget and maximize your online advertising, um, it's important to ask any sort of a question that you might have, okay? So I think we're good. It looks like there's a couple other people in uh, the room that are trying to join. I allowed them in, so let's see if they can join, uh, and then let's get started. Okay, so uh, my name is Miriam Golubgear. Thank you all for joining today. Um, this presentation is to discuss how are we going to um, A, use a marketing budget and B, how to maximize it uh, to your benefit. I've been in the industry for um, 18 years. I started when I was 18, I'm lying. Um, but I've been at it for many years. I started my business 10 years ago. Um, and the reason I started my business is because I wanted to work with small to medium-sized businesses. And I was under this absolute false impression that being a small business owner um, would give me more time to spend with my son, which wasn't the case at all. I work a lot. I work seven days a week. Um, I've done everything from telecommunication to e-commerce, IPTV, AI development, broadband, renewable energy, and finance. So I have a pretty broad knowledge of what is really out there and what we need to do. Um, in today's digital age, businesses of all size are allocating significant budgets toward their digital marketing initiatives. However, maximizing the return on investment from these budgets are very crucial in order for us to achieve that business goal that we uh, want to achieve. Um, I have put my contact information at the bottom and you guys are more than welcome to share your um, insights or your contacts with me. If you have any qu further questions after this, I'm more than happy to answer them. Um, and um, what we're going to do is we'll make it interactive. I'll go through it slide by slide. If you have any questions, unmute, ask your question. If you don't, you can put it in a chat. If you want to have it afterwards, that's fine as well. All right, so how to allocate your marketing budget? This is a question that everybody asks. Uh, and, and, and the main, so the main answer to that is we allocate marketing budget based on what is our overall goal, okay? So first and foremost, you have to establish what is your absolute goal? What is What do you wanna do with your business? And when it comes to goals, we always think, well, what are we gonna do in the next 12 months? Well. Let's make it a lot smaller. Let's plan for the next five months or three months. And, and creating a three-month plan is a lot more achievable and it's easier to achieve than it is the 12-month plan, okay? So we're going to set goals of what we want to achieve in the next three to five months maximum, okay? So here are some of the main goals that I think you should consider. Earning more sales increasing your leads. And these are people that you want to get as a customer. Great. Earning more subscribers. If you have a platform that you want people to subscribe to, you can say, I want my goal to be earning new subscribers or increase brand awareness. I personally rarely recommend increasing brand awareness for small businesses, mainly because and awareness is something that we create when we want people to know that we exist, but that's not good enough. We want sales and leads. So creating, earning more sales and increasing leads should be your number one, two priorities that you set before you start talking about how am I going to allocate my budget to that. The other piece is that we kind of want to figure out <clears throat> how are we going to get these customers? And you want to establish your sales cycle, okay? So when you create a marketing budget, you want to establish a sales funnel. And your sales funnels is a very critical component of your marketing budget. Mainly because that awareness that we were talking about 
is always the stage one. You you kind of want people to know and be aware of who you are and what problems they have that you're going to be solving and what solutions you're going to be providing. Then you want to add in consideration. So the consideration is the stage where your audience, your, your potential leads and your potential sales start looking at options available to them. And that's when they're kind of thinking about, do I want to work with um, this company that I'm dealing with or not? Then once they figure out, yes, you're the person they want to work with, then we go into the decision making. So that's when the lead reaches the the, 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 the point, point of their uh, research where they kind of narrow down their rep, the, the, the people that they want to work with. And they say, well, you know what? There's five companies. I'm thinking of like, maybe company A and B out of the five that I'm very comfortable with. And then the action is when that lead decides that I'm going to move forward with this company and I'm going to become their customer and I'm going to work with them. And But your marketing budget starts where the awareness is. This is where we tell them that we exist. And then we still have to allocate more of our dollars to the consideration stage and then the decision stage and then the action stage. Now, as a small business, we don't have a big budget. So how are we going to make this smaller to fit what we want to do? Well, before we do that, we need to know what are my outside costs? There's um, a piece to our business where it's all the external costs. What are my operation costs? What are my costs for employing a staff? What are my costs for running my business? I have electricity, water for my own existence. I need money to survive. And with you know, everything that's happening right now and the cost of living being so high, how much of that cost of living that I have was going to be part of this outside cost before I can set up my um, marketing budget? You also want to consider that these costs, uh, when you create a marketing budget, but not only does this determine what services you can invest in, but it also helps you kind of create a baseline on your return on investment. I had a, a really good conversation earlier on this morning with uh, someone and we said, one thing we keep forgetting is that sometimes we actually don't price our services good enough or well enough um, to even be able to advertise. We got to make sure that the price that we set for our business, for the services that we provide is good enough that it covers the operational costs, the cost of employment, the cost of running my business, my own personal costs. And I'm just going to, everybody, there we go. I'm just going to mute everybody. Uh, before we can, you know, figure out what sort of a return on investment I'm getting, and then I'd be able to put some money aside to market myself even better. So in 2022, marketing budget budgets have increased um, to 9.5% from 6.4% in 2021. Uh, number one reason is that a lot more businesses have realized that being online is pretty significant and important to their business. So they have in added a lot more budget to advertise themselves online. So after two years of digital spending approach, 70% of marketing budgets, the allocation of digital and offline spending has shifted. So more people are now prefer to be online because they know that if I'm online, I will have a broader view of who else is online. Also, when you're online, it's easier to track and manage where your money is going because there's data. When you advertise offline, you can't collect enough data. So if you are delivering flyers to 4,000 homes, all you know is that you dropped off 4,000 flyers to 4,000 homes. You don't know how many people picked it up. You don't know how many people read it unless those people give you a call and say, I saw your flyer and I want to talk to you. So the only data you're gathering is based on the action of the other person to contact you. Whereas when you advertise online, you have a plethora of information and data available to you. You can see, well, I, I posted on Facebook, so I got 4,000 reach on my post. I look at my analytics on my website and I see out of the 4,000 people that saw it on Facebook, 200 came into my website. Out of that 200, three people made it to the shopping cart section. Out of that, two people ended up buying. So that data is there for you to collect and see. So that is a one of the reasons why people gravitate towards the online advertising. So more than half of digital spend is being allocated to per paid um, channels like social search 
and display and video advertising. So in the past, people used to advertise on TV and would spend thousands and thousands of dollars to advertise on TV. Well, that has shifted. Now you can advertise on YouTube at a two cents to eight cents per view. And if you want them to click on a, um, a banner that you have underneath your video, that's another 60, sorry, 30 to 60 cents. So it's a lot more affordable for people to advertise on YouTube. Um, or other video advertising sites. And then there's connected TV. Connected TV is another source that is very affordable for people. And this is when it's a digital stream where you can watch it from anywhere, from your mobile, your TV, your tablet, your desktop, and you still get the same exact level of advertising as people used to do on regular traditional TV advertising. Uh, search and display are the ads that we buy through Google, Yahoo, and Bing. Yahoo and Bing are together. So it's basically everybody that advertised on Google and Bing. And social is everything that you advertise on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and they also work as well. Depending on the type of business you have and your consumers, or sorry, the customers you're going after, those are great platforms as well. Search engine optimization and content marketing and email marketing also um, drive the earned digital channels as well. Email marketing works really well because at some point, if they've decided that they want to subscribe to your uh, services, now they're getting updates about the services that you provide. And if you have any sort of a promotion, they want to work with you. Uh, content marketing, this is when you create a lot of good content about your business or the services that you provide. Again, really good opportunity for you to get some organic search back to your website. And search engine optimization, it speaks for itself. It's when you optimize your website, where you naturally and organically come to the first pages without having to spend the advertising dollars. Mobile marketing has grown to a point that there's no longer track, tracked separate, uh, separately in the forecast, and it's presumed to be considered across all channels. 89% of Canadians are on their phones. So if you want to advertise and you pick that I want my ads to come up further, higher and higher, higher on mobile ads, that makes sense and you should consider that. Okay, so why do I put YouTube and TikTok up here? I personally am not a fan of TikTok. However, the reason I'm not a fan of TikTok is because I'm com I come from a very old school background and I don't um, subscribe to the 30 seconds mentality that you have 30 seconds to watch a video and make a decision. I see sales and online marketing as a fun, as a funnel. You set up um, a, a, the, the concrete base of a good sales and then you build it on that. But that's just my personal opinion because two studies from Insider Intelligence from November, 2021 and April, 2022 show that while Facebook and Instagram um, have the most users in the United States and Canada, TikTok and YouTube lead the way for average time spent per day on these platforms. So that tells us that if your business is targeting the a certain age group of individuals that are on TikTok, and TikTok will grow eventually and get more uh, different age groups in there. Uh, but right now, TikTok is one of the places to be. Uh, if you have any sort of a video, this is a platform that works for you. YouTube has done phenomenally great. So YouTube audience is more widespread across age groups in the report of Statistica, Statista uh, shows that over 60% of internet users in every age group use YouTube. So this is, again, it's a really good platform because originally we're talking about if you want to advertise on TV, you no longer have to do that. You can advertise on YouTube. So we can allocate a percentage of your budget to advertising on YouTube. All right, so how much should I, how much should my uh, firm budget for marketing? There's two different types of firms. There are the businesses that reach other businesses. And for those guys, anywhere between six to 8% range of your uh, marketing budget, your budget should be for marketing, six to 8% works for business to business. For business to consumer, you have to increase that anywhere between eight to 14%. Because your, the, the, range of competitors that you have in this industry is a lot more. So marketing budgets as a percent of overall firm budget have been fairly consistent for business to business firms the past few years um, in the nine to 11% range. But 
average much higher to from business to consumers that it goes up to 20%. Again, you're also not just competing with um, competitors that are local to you, you're competing with international competitors and competitors from other, you know, from globally, you're, you're competing. So if you are advertising to people in, in a very small area in, let's say you live in King and you only want to advertise to the King people, you're not the only one that's advertising to them. You have people from China, from India, from, you know, US that are advertising to the same people that you're advertising. So you always have to try to have a, a bigger range of um, budget allocation to advertise yourself. Are we good so far? Does anybody have any questions? I don't see anything in the chat. Okay, I take it that we're good. You guys can unmute yourself if you want. Okay. So you want to put seven to eight percent of your gross revenue towards marketing, then allocate 50% of that marketing budget to digital marketing. Now, this number changes depending on the industry you're in, depending on the services you provide, depending on the products that you serve, that you provide, and depending on the location you're at. So you might go from 50% allocation to digital to 80% or sometimes 100% to digital. So it, it there's, a, there's a science behind it, but it all depends on what you sell, who you're selling it to, from what location and how often. So we're going to talk about uh, best marketing channels for your brand, okay? So depending on your audience and your brand, you want to choose the best way to market yourself and uh, pick the right channel. So by starting, you need to analyze your needs and determine which promotional channels work best for your return on investment. And before you do that, it's good to ask yourself these top 10 questions. And these questions include, do I need to do an outreach? And if I do, will we use an inbound marketing strategy? Who are we targeting? What demographic, what is the demographic of these individuals we're targeting? Uh, are we targeting people based on their interests and behavior? Or are we targeting people based on um, their age group? Now, to answer number four and number five, we usually target based on personas. We're saying we want to go after people that are between a certain age group. So let's say if you um, sell products, uh, beauty products, you kind of want to go between the ages of 18 to 26. That's your top um, buyers. And you want to pick um, predominantly female and then some male to purchase these products. But the other part of it is that what is their interest? Because picking people based on um, just age and gender, it won't necessarily work for you. Because if you're selling beauty products, and let's say if I'm an 18 to 25 or 18 to 26 year old, I may not particularly be interested in that. But if I have shown interest in anything to do with beauty and, and, and that information is online about me, then I would be the right target audience. So you kind of want to mix the demographically and the interest and beauty together um, so that you can get that perfect client. So what is the goal of the marketing campaign? And this is one of the most important questions you ask yourself. What is the goal? Because if your goal is to increase leads, then um, you don't necessarily want the brand awareness, which is the next questions. But if you're... Um, but if your goal is, well, I do want brand awareness. I want people to know who I am and, and see how wonderful my business is before they can make the decision that I am the best for them to come. Then you're going to need the brand awareness. You want to ask yourself, how many conversions am I looking for? So this is where we get a little bit more realistic with what it is that we're expecting. And this is where we always say, okay, so we pick the number of leads that we want to get. Because realistically, if you get let's say 10 leads, that doesn't mean that becomes 10 sales for you. That's just 10 leads. And then in that cycle of decision-making, they have not decided that they want to work with you. That, and that's not a full sale, right? So you can't, can't count this person as a conversion. A conversion is when that lead becomes a complete sale. And that's, that's one person that you sold to. So that is one conversion. So this is when you have to have your moment of, okay, well, if I get 
hundred leads, the, how many can I possibly sell? Because I target the right group of people. I targeted them demographically. I target them based on their interest. So this is exactly who's looking for my stuff. So if that's the person, maybe that 10 leads or a hundred leads, sorry, let's say that hundred leads can become, you know, 50 sales. So that's 50 conversions that I'm expecting. So when you ask for that 50 expectations, then you set your budget based on um, how do I get that 50 conversion and that expectations. Do we want more traffic to the website? Sometimes we want more traffic because if we might bring them for the beauty product, but we want to sell them something else in addition. So we want to upsell multiple products to them. So that traffic is good because more people come in, more people will see that. Which social media channels are best for my target audience? And this is a very good question because sometimes if you want to sell beauty products, you might just want to stick with Instagram. And if you want the younger audience, TikTok and Instagram may work for you. If you want to go for 40 plus, Facebook would be a better solution. Or if you want to do business to business, LinkedIn would be the better solution. So when you ask yourself these questions, this will give you a definite breakdown of how you're going to make that plan and strategize your, um, your, your move before you can allocate the budget to it. Okay, content marketing is always the key. It will continuously be the key. So almost half of 40% of marketers say that content marketing is a significant part of their overall marketing strategy. This is, in a nutshell, when you tell a story, this is where you build your trust you build your bond with your brand and your audience. This is when you are raw and you're honest with your end users and you tell them why. You tell them why you're here, what problem you're here to solve, and how is this going to help them? And how are you going to always be there when they need you? So that trust, that bond only comes from content marketing. Content marketing is when you create videos, you create images, that display what your business is about. You write stories about your business, accurate information about your business. This is when you tell them about a product. This is where you create 360 videos of your products. This is what content marketing is. So according to HubSpot, 46% of marketing budgets are spent on content creation, okay? 24% of marketers plan to increase their content marketing investments. And the software companies add that 70% of marketers are actively investing in content marketing. This is that Facebook post, the Instagram post, the TikTok video, the YouTube videos, the do-it-yourself videos that we create. All of those make a huge impact on what it is that we're doing and how that works. You do need to allocate a portion of your marketing budget to content marketing. This is when you hire someone to create graphics for you, or if you don't have the budget, that's fine. You can use Canva. Canva is a very good tool that you can use to create really beautiful um, images for yourself. Um, I highly recommend using your phone and creating raw videos. Um, if you can't do that, hire a videography company that can help you create really good videos. This is where you spend the money to create content that represents your business. These contents are, remember when we go to the uh, brick and mortar store, when we walk into a brick and mortar store, we see beautiful displays. We see beautiful products laying around in different areas, strategically placed based on what our eyes want to see. That's what content marketing is. This is where we create good, beautiful displays for people to trust us. Okay, so... How are we going to improve our return on investment on your digital marketing budget? Okay. An essential component of preparing your 2024 budget is choosing a good strategy. Okay. You don't have to be 100% sure about the strategy, but you need to pick a strategy that fits your business needs. Number one thing you need to do before you get to this point is to create a tiny little marketing plan for yourself and say, I'm going to do this in 2024. This is my simple marketing plan. And on top of that simple marketing plan, I'm going to put in, uh, I'm going to search engine optimize my website, and I'm going to do some cost per click ads. Okay, well, I'm going to do cost per click ads, but what, what am I 
going to get at the end of that. So I'm going to put in expectations that I have from this cost per click ad. I cannot put an expectation on search engine optimization because search engine op optimization allows me to optimize my website and so that I can come up. But if I'm doing ads, I'm spending money on an ad, right? I want something to get in return. So if I'm advertising at for like a 15 bucks a day, I expect to get two customers a day or one customer a day. So how do I make that ad to work for me where I get that one or two customers a day? The next is you want to put social media marketing into your um, um, plan. So why, what is social media marketing? This is when you create those beautiful content and you strategically place them based on what it is that you want to sell and build relationships with leads and nurture those customers. So if you are um, selling jewelry, you want to have at least six posts about those items that you want to sell to tell them what it is. Tell them if it's a real gold, if it's a 14 karat gold, if it's, you know, plated gold, if it has diamonds on it. You want to explain to them what it is that you sell. Then you want to do some advertising. So first you want to create the platform where they can see it. Here it is. You can see the beautiful rings that I have. So the 18 karat gold is what it looks like. But then once you, you've done that and you've created a bit of an interaction between people and your products, then the next step is that you want to advertise that. You want to say, hey, by the way, if anybody wants to buy from Brilliant Earth, here are um, 18 white gold uh, with diamonds. And here, you can click on this and shop it and purchase it. But first and foremost, put that image in there and create a plan and say, my plan is to promote my top five products line um, and talk about how amazing they are and how beautiful they are. And then I'm going to run an ad around it. So, and the reason you do that is because you want to build um, a group of followers. You want to post so people can see it and they start following you. Once they follow you, then you advertise to them and you advertise to people that are similar to those that you have collected. Oh, there's a question. Let me answer this. Thanks. Oh, okay. You're welcome. Okay. The next thing is email marketing. I'm a big fan of email marketing. I think email marketing works really well. I think one of the things that happens with email marketing is that you stay connected with people. And when you stay connected with them, it kind of uh, nurtures that relationship. And if you are really savvy, you can buy, uh, sorry, you can offer some promotions, you can do some exclusive deals. If they um, were on your website, but they didn't make a purchase um, and left something in the cart, you can set up an abandoned cart reminder to bring them back to the cart so they can purchase something off of the cart. Um, or what, from time to time, you can just send a message and say, hey, just want to say how you guys are doing. Um, or if you do anything particular that is good for the environment or uh, good for society and you're being kind and doing some sort of a charity work, you want to let people know that this is what you're doing. So this is your uh, portal between your email marketing is a, it's a portal between you and people that have decided that they like your business enough that they want to subscribe to you and want to listen to what you have to say. And email marketing, for the most part, I have to add one more thing. It's not as costly as advertising. Um, depending on the platform you pick, the costs are negligible and it does produce a lot more than the costs are. And you also want to look at, um, when you do any sort of an email marketing, look at the reports that it provides you. That report will give you an idea of what sort of emails are doing better for you and which ones aren't working for you. So the ones that are more about promotions, maybe they do well for you. So maybe you want to put more, um, send out more emails that has to do with promotions rather than the ones that are more about what your business is about. So look at those reports and analyze those reports. And if you don't understand them, call people like me and say, I just need you to explain to me how this report works. Um, most marketing agencies, we don't charge people to read the reports and explain them to them. You want to stay local. 
This is something that I tell everybody. Your business has to stay local because when you get the local and the local love you, they will expand you. So having a uh, Google My Business account or having um, being on the map or Google uh, or setting up your Google business profile, all of that will help you grow. Because the first thing you can do when you run an ad, you can run a Google map ad. So when someone's looking for you and it's near you, they can find you faster. It's much easier for people to work with someone that's local to them than to work with someone who's in you know, another province or another city or another state. Okay, you wanna research strategy prices. So whether you're going to run your uh, campaigns yourself or hire a freelancer or hire a marketing agency, you gotta know how much everything costs, okay? Um, and that will make an impact on your marketing budget breakdown. So if you're hiring a freelancer, those are people that specialize in one type of strategies or dabble in a few. And if you're hiring a freelancer, you're pretty much paying them per hour to do a project or sometimes you do it per project. Uh, agencies, if you hire an agency, you'll get everything you need and all the tools and they'll do everything for you and they'll provide a report and say, this is what we do uh, and this is what you did and this is how we're going to help you grow. And they'll track, they track your growth and success and they'll fix it. If you want to do it in-house, um, the costs will be less, but then you have to hire people to do it. So um, you do have to pay a salary to somebody to do it. Unless if you say, well, you know what? I, I figured it out myself. I'm going to do it myself and I'm going to execute my campaigns. This is when you have to rely really highly on your own reporting and watch your reports um, and be very due diligent with how your um, campaigns are doing and track your success. So if you want to use uh, a market digital marketing services, whether you do with freelancers or uh, a marketing company, these are the costs that you're looking at. Okay. So for SEO, it's anywhere between 500 to 20,000 a month. Um, for cost per click, it's five to 10% of monthly ad spend. Content marketing is 2000 to 20,000. Email marketing is 300 to 2,500 and social media is 25, 250 to 10,000. Now, there's a, there's a way for you to do a lot of this yourself. I, I'm a big um, believer that companies should do their own content marketing. I'm a believer that you know more about your business than any of us do. We will need that time to learn what this business, what your business is about. And in order for us to learn that property, it takes us, you know, a bit of a trial and error, whereas you don't know, you know this better than us. So for you to create good content, um, it's far more worth it for you than it is to come to us. And we will charge you for things that you can do yourself. There's a chat. Hold on one second. I want to read what's in the chat. For doing email marketing, do we need to first have ads in order to get clients' emails? Uh, that's a really good question. No, you can start with adding um, subscribe a newsletter to your website and see people that are coming to your website if they're interested in learning more about you. So that's one way. Um, you do need more customers in order for you to be able to send them information. But the other part that you can do is... Um, if you have networks that you've built over the years through different social media platforms, uh, reach out to them, ask them if it's okay for you to send them an email about your business because there's castle lots. You can't just randomly send people emails. Um, ask them if it's okay, then collect that consent and add them to your mailing list. Okay. Let's talk about common marketing budget mistakes, okay? Here are a few of the common mistakes people make. Funneling spend to channels that don't provide high returns. This is when we have wishful hopes and we wanna make it work because we think we think this platform is gonna work for us. So this kind of applies to a lot of social platforms. Um, I'll use one as an example. I think with Facebook, certain times, Facebook has this um, false, it provides a false hope 
that it's helping your business because it gives you a lot of pretty shiny um, uh, ways of advertising yourself. But I always say, look back at your analytics of your website. Look back at your data that you've collected and see how many people they said that they came from Facebook. How many people said they came from LinkedIn? How many people said they came from Google? And analyze that. If within the first month, Facebook has given you nothing, pull it out of Facebook. So you want to track the return on investment on the strategy and you want to make sure that the budget goes to the campaigns that actually work. If you see that the people that come from Facebook spend zero minute on your website, zero seconds on your website, but Facebook shows that there's a thousand people coming to your website, well, there's a problem there. Why are you not selling those? So I would say step back from it, think it through. If it's not giving you return on investment, don't retry it, move on. Not using data to implement and optimize marketing campaigns. This is so vital. Data is one of the most important part of everybody's business. If you have a website and you have analytics set up, that analytics will give you plenty of data that you can use to track and analyze which campaign is working and which one isn't. Who are my audience? Are they the one the right audience that are coming to the website or my ads are not working or my um Content marketing is not working. I want 25 to 34 year olds to show up my website, but based on what my analytics shows, I'm getting 18 to 24s. What am I doing wrong? So that at data is extremely crucial to the success of your business and the success of your marketing budget. Discounting current customers. This is when we're like, we want to get a new customer, but that new customer costs more to acquire. It costs you time and effort to go and get someone new. If you already have existing customer, nurture those relationships. Allocate your, your budget to retaining current customers and building customer loyalty. Customer loyalty is when they go and bring more customers for you. All of my customers have been around for the past, I've been at it for, for the past 10 years, almost 11 years. All of them. I have great relationships with all of them. If they left, it was because they ran out of money. It wasn't because we left on bad terms. And that is so important. Making sure that customer stays for as long as you can keep them. Don't use last year's marketing budget. So people change. Audiences change. Interests change. Markets change. You can't use last year's budget this year. You don't want to get stuck allocating the same spend to the channels you did last year to this year, because that channel may not work for you anymore. Maybe that audience have moved on to another channel. Maybe this audience actually needs less money or more money. So you have to constantly analyze and see who's on this new channel and run small campaigns. Don't run massive campaigns, run small campaigns and measure small success. When you measure small success, it's easier to analyze it than it is when you spend $5,000 and that leaves, and you don't get anything and it, that leaves a sour taste in your mouth. But if you do a $200 campaign and you're like, well, wait a minute, this did work. I got one customer that motivates you to create bigger campaigns. So when you to run small campaigns this year, it gives you an idea of what it is that uh, each channel is doing for you. Okay, so devote around 15% of your marketing budget to new and exploratory marketing channels to uncover future stable, reliable channels, okay? So be open to something new. Just because someone told you Facebook's gonna work, it doesn't mean it's gonna work this year. It just someone, just because I just told you about TikTok, it doesn't mean it's gonna work for you. But what if it did work for you? What if Facebook did work for you? So explore it. Explore opportunities, and it's not a big budget. It's only 15%. So how much do different industries spend on their marketing budget? This is a big one. Communication media spends about 10%. Mining and construction, 3%. Consulting, service consulting, 21%. Okay, these are everybody that's in the real estate, in mortgage and any sort of a service base that they have to provide consulting consumer package goods is nine percent consumer services are six percent education is three percent energy is one percent 
banking, finance, insurance, and real estate is 8%. So this is the consulting, but this is the actual selling real estate part. My apologies. Healthcare, healthcare is 18%. Manufacturing is 13 Retail wholesale is 14 Technology is 21 And transportation is 6%. So if you fall within, this is the percentage of the revenue of the company's gross revenue that you can spend on your marketing. However, this is also dependent on how much you charge for your services and if that budget makes sense for you. All right, so we're at the end. Does anybody have any questions? There was a couple of questions in the chat. Does anybody else have any questions? Okay, well, I'm glad you guys enjoyed this. I'm going to send everybody this um, presentation plus the recording if you want it. There's another one coming up. Um, there's another presentation that we have coming up uh, for ma for how to actually set a marketing budget. I will send everybody that as well. So feel free to join that. And uh, thank you again for attending today. Thank you. Welcome. Bye everyone.